We start our tour of Cape Romano and the Dome Homes, leaving from Caxambas Park on Marco Island. The homes you see on your left are in the estates portion of Marco and are located on Caxambas Island. As we cross Caxambas Pass, we head to two sandy islands, the first of which is Carina Island. People call these the Caxambas Sandbar or just the Caxambas Bar, and these are a great place for showing. The big high rise you see on the end of the island is Ship's Landing. You'll see two kayaks straight ahead. This is Caxambas Bay. It's flat as a pond. This is part of the Paradise Coast Blue Way Canoe and Kayak Trail. Straight ahead, you see the entrance to Caxambas Pass. As we reach the south end of Marco, you will notice that the gulf is much rougher than the bay. The bay in here is sheltered by two sandbars and the islands. The cluster of high rises in the distance on the end is Cape Marco. They are located on a point called Cape Wilma, which is the end of the main Marco beach. We're passing by the Carina Island Sandbar. This is a very popular shelling spot and most people call it the Shell Bar. Residents from the ship's landing condo would often come out to Carina Island and set up beach chairs. The island is so named Carina Island because it was the site where a boat named the Carina ran aground. The island is part of the Caxambas Critical Wildlife Area and is a rookery for many shorebirds. Here on the end of the island, we come to a colony of oyster catchers. These birds have a unique beak that is able to open oyster shells. And here they are. These islands originally formed as oyster bars. The tall Australian pines you see in the distance are on Dickman's Point. Dickman's Point is the north end of Dickman's Island and was the site of Joe Dickman's home. He was a hermit living on Dickman's Island until his home was destroyed by Hurricane Donna. The sandbar you see to your right is Ori and Isaac's Point. This is the other sandbar and it is attached to Dickman's Island. This is also a great spot for shelling. Here at Dickman's Point, this is a popular stopover for boaters and kayakers. This also is a great shelling spot. This is one of the nicest beaches in the 10,000 Islands. Many people stop here to camp and to do amateur astronomy. And here we are on the back side of Dickens Island. This is Emily Pass, which separates Dickman's Island from Kais Island. On the north is Dickman's Island, and on the south is the northern tip of Kais Island. As we pass the north end of Kais Island on the bay side, we pass into Grassy Bay. Grassy Bay is a large, shallow bay on the east side of Kais Island. Seagrass flats, like those found in this shallow bay, are an important estuarine ecosystem and a nursery for fish.
we come to the Mangrove Creek leading from Grassy Bay towards Snook Hole Channel. Off of this Mangrove Creek are numerous smaller creeks which are a great place to kayak. Many of the creeks are tree canopy and are sometimes called mangrove tunnels. This is kind of like the jungle cruise in this section. And here we come to some fissures. Remember, you can cast your line along the mangrove roots and that is a great place to catch fish. During Prohibition times, these mangrove channels were used by rum runners and other bootleggers trying to avoid being caught. It was very easy for them to duck and hide in many places here, and the maze of mangroves made it almost impossible for law enforcement to catch them. Further ahead, we are coming to the entrance of one of the many so-called mangrove tunnels. These are a great place to kayak, and Kais Island is one of the best places for kayaking in the 10,000 Islands. And here we come from this mangrove creek into Snook Hole Channel. Snook Hole Channel runs from Caxambas Bay south to the Gulf of Mexico via the Snook Hole. On your right is Kais Island, and on your left is Vince Key and Helen Key. The large body of water between Kais Island, Helen Key, and Cape Romano Island at the entrance of Snook Hole Channel is sometimes referred to as simply the Snook Hole. This is a popular area for snook fishing owing to the tide movement through this area bringing in large schools of fish. Here we come to a small beach and sandbar at the north end of Cape Romano Island along the Snook Hole. Owing to the large volume of fish, the Snook Hole is a common dolphin congregating area. Many dolphins will feed here in the Snook Hole and on the east side of Cape Romano Island.
The northern portion of the east side of Cape Romano Island is lined with mangroves, and along the shore are a few small pocket beaches. A deep channel runs parallel to this portion of the shore and the dolphins will feed here by chasing fish up the bank along the shore. And here we've turned around and are heading back towards Snook Hole Channel. On your left is Cape Romano Island, and on your right straight ahead is Helen Key. This area of the gulf on the east side of Cape Romano Island is called Gullivan's Bight. 
This area is sheltered on three sides. On the west, by Cape Romano Island. On the north, by Helen Key and the 10,000 Islands. And on the east, by the 10,000 Islands. It is only open to the Gulf of Mexico on the south. And from the Snook Hole, here we enter Blind Pass. On the north side of Blind Pass, to the right is Kais Island, and to the left is Morgan Island. And as we round the north end of Cape Romano Island, we enter the Morgan River. The Morgan River is a tidal strait that runs between Cape Romano Island and Morgan Island. On the left is Cape Romano Island, and on the right is Morgan Island. quote-unquote, in the middle of the island, between Morgan Island and Cape Romano Island, is Morgan Bay. This bay is a very shallow bay that has most of its channels around the edges, and in the middle is a very shallow mudflat that is a rookery for many bird species, including white pelicans and brown pelicans. As we come into the wider section of Morgan Bay, we will notice some sandbars on the western side of the bay straight ahead. These sandbars used to be in the place where there were once inlets between the bay and the Gulf of Mexico. Many of these inlets will open and close over time as this area is very dynamic along Morgan Beach. There used to be a sandbar stretching south along the west side of Cape Romano Island that went almost to the end. It was on this sandbar that the dome house was originally built before it eroded away. On the very shallow mud flat in the center of the bay, you will notice brown pelicans. And here we have also some ibis. These ibis were sometimes referred to as Chocolosky chickens because the chickens were less available than the ibis, and ibis were hunted as meat in the early days of the Everglades.
Right now we're approaching Morgan Pass, which connects between Morgan Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. Morgan Pass has changed much through the years. It now connects straight west to the Gulf of Mexico. Morgan Pass originally turned south along the shoreline, and it was on this sandbar that was between Morgan Pass and the Gulf of Mexico that the Dome House was originally built. On the right, you have Morgan Island, and on the left, you have Cape Romano Island. As we pass through Morgan Pass, you will notice the eroded state of the shoreline. The gulf in this section tends to be very rough and strong currents. On your right is Morgan Beach. It's not much of a beach. It looks more like rocks and dead trees. This here is a very much eroded shoreline owing to the rough seas in the area and the tidal motion which strips the sand away from the shoreline. Looking north you'll see the high rises of Marco Island far in the distance. Morgan Beach is not much of a true beach, although it is a very interesting shoreline owing to the eroded rocky nature of the shore. The beach you see straight ahead is Cape Romano's West Beach. This beach is a small sandbar in the area where there was once an inlet between Morgan Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. This shoreline has changed much, eroding back from what it was originally at. The sandbar that once supported the Cape Romano Dome Home is now gone. The homes are now standing in the water and you can see them straight ahead, far in the distance, located at the very end of Cape Romano Island. The Cape Romano West Beach is occasionally a good shelling spot, but the beach here tends to be very much a strong current and heavy waves which will break any shells that really tend to come onto this beach. There are better beaches in the area. It's not really the best beach for stopping at. The dome houses didn't used to be so far out in the water. There was originally a sandbar here between Morgan Pass and the Gulf of Mexico on which the dome homes stood. This sandbar has eroded away the island has almost lost all of its sand at the point. The dome homes were originally 500 feet inland. They are now over 500 feet in the Gulf of Mexico. The shoreline has eroded 1,000 feet since the 1980s. The erosion in this area is due to the strong southward tidal motion as well as the heavy waves in the area. The dome homes were constructed by retired inventor Bob Lee in 1979. He had visions of developing Cape Romano Island and two other homes were built in the area, both which are no longer standing. The so-called Pyramid House and the stilt house were both built on the sandbar that also supported the dome house. When the Mackle brothers developed Marco Island as a winter resort community, Bob Lee had an idea for Cape Romano Island becoming the millionaire's row and kind of having a place for eclectic architecture located at the very south end of Cape Romano. Cape Romano Island is unique in that it has both a west and east facing beach with a clear sunset in the west and a clear sunrise in the east. Owing to the structure's location fully exposed at the tip of Cape Romano, Bob Lee designed this structure 
such that there would be no sharp corners. This prevents the wind from blowing the structure over as many other structures that have failed in Category 5 hurricanes. This structure was built to maintain its integrity through the strongest hurricanes. It endured Hurricane Andrew with minimal damage, only suffering from small amount of water intrusion. Even after it had lost the sand beneath the foundations, the structure continued to stand through Hurricane Wilma and through Hurricane Irma, although two of the rooms collapsed during Hurricane Irma, owing to the loss of the foundation. When Bob Lee had the structure built, there were no utilities available at the south end of Cape Romano. That did not stop him from building his home in this very much choice location. He designed the structure so rainwater falling off of the roof would collect in a cistern below the domes. This supplied his drinking water. He also had solar panels set up to supply electricity to his home. He had an off-grid system which provided full utilities and modern conveniences in this remote location at the south end of Cape Romano. After Hurricane Andrew, the shoreline was so changed that the erosion began to rapidly claim the home. His vision of having Cape Romano Island developed into a millionaire's retreat never came to pass. The two other homes on Cape Romano Island had been totally washed away. He was never able to get around to restoring the dome house, and in 2005 he sold it to John Tosto, who intended to build a seawall and restore the home. Later that year, in 2005, Hurricane Wilma came and irreparably damaged the home. Attempts were made to move the structures onto dry ground, but the shaky state of the foundations prevented that. The land has slowly eroded away and the home is now standing in the gulf. It is now the state's responsibility to maintain the structure and right now the state has just decided to let nature take its course and as the structure it just continues to erode away into the Gulf of Mexico as erosion works away at Cape Romano. At the far tip of the island we are now quote unquote rounding the horn of Cape Romano. As you can see there is a small beach area at the tip. This area is popular with beach campers who come to see the dome house. And as you can see here, the island has a nice white sand beach on the east side. This is one of the few beaches on the Gulf Coast of Florida where one may watch the sun rise over the water. This is part of the unique allure of Cape Romano that led Bob Lee to choose this site. Cape Romano has become something of a local legend. When Bob Lee first had the structure built, people thought it was either A, the set of Star Wars, or aliens. It really got conspiracy theorists going. Bob Lee kind of took that like he was kind of a prankster, so he kind of liked people spreading rumors about his home. Another guy started construction on the east side of Cape Romano. He was able to have a dock built and a dredged canal from Morgan Bay. The foundation of a home stands at this site, but he was never able to get the permits to build his house. As you can see, the pilings from the dock still remain. The island mostly belongs to the state of Florida, although there are still a few private landowners along the East Beach. There will never be permits given to build a home on this site. 
This is an example of quote unquote where not to build your home. The old proverb of the one who is a fool builds their house on sand holds true and Cape Romano is an example attesting to the validity of this proverb. Straight ahead is the south-facing beach of Helen Key. This beach is a very small, narrow beach, but it does have some great shelling and is almost never publicized. This beach faces south, just like Sanibel, and catches many of the shells brought up in the ocean currents. If you do visit the beach here on Helen Key, you will likely have the entire beach to yourself, and this is one of the beaches for the true adventurer to visit. There are no facilities nor development of any kind on the island, and the island has no man-made structures along the entire shore. This is truly a quote-unquote wild beach. After passing Helen Key, we pass by some mangrove islands on our way to Coon Key and Tripod Key in the Goodland area. This is the northern shoreline of Gullivan Bight, and in this area there is almost no wave action owing to the sheltered nature of the shore. In the distance here you see the beach on Brush Island. This is a popular site for beach camping in the 10,000 Islands. Here we are rounding the southern end of Coon Key. This is a popular party spot for Goodlanders. Goodlanders will kayak or boat down to Coon Key to enjoy the beach on this desert island. It's also a spot where Goodlanders come to drink beer, party, relax, and say, what would Jimmy Buffett do?
Here we are in the raccoon channel with coon key on the left and tripod key on the right. Tripod key is another beach in the Goodland area. It's a great spot for shelling. The shoreline is just laden with shells. There's a few pocket beaches on tripod key amongst the mangroves. This is also a party spot for Goodlanders. The area of Coon Key Pass on the west side of Tripod Key is another dolphin congregating area. As we head into Coon Key Pass, we are coming upon a pod of dolphins, so be on the lookout. The tide movement in this area brings a lot of fish and this gently sloping mud flats of Tripod Key offer the dolphins a place to catch the fish. And here we are heading to the northern tip of Coon Key. And here on your sandbar, you'll see a raccoon. Coon Key was named for the abundance of raccoons living on the island. This is not a good spot for a picnic. Remember, the raccoons will take your picnic food. but it is a great place to party on a boat. On our way into Coon Key Pass, we'll pass by the beaches on Tripod Key. These are some of the nicest beaches in the Goodland area. Goodland is not known for its beaches, but it does have a couple sandy beach areas along the Gulf. These are not actually the most picturesque beaches, but they are still beaches in the 10,000 islands. These beaches are usually quite secluded and offer a more old world vibe with the more old Florida feel rather than the commercialized beaches of the more Gulf front areas.
As we pass through the 10,000 islands, we will pass by Ors Island. This is also known as Key Marco and is home to an ultra-luxury mansion development. This area is the other developed island other than Marco in the area. And after we pass Key Marco, we come back to Marco Island. And we return to Caxambas Park.